ever wanted more control over the style of your stable diffusion generations? If only you could just show it an image and say, hey, do it like this, wouldn't that make it easier than messing with text prompts? I guess it would sort of be like visual style prompting. Uh, oh right, that's what this is. Yes, we've seen things like this a few times before, but check out how it compares to things like IP Adapter, Style Drop, Style Align, and DB Laura. Those clouds just knock the socks off the competition, I think. The others don't look like cloud formations at all. The fire and painting style ones all look great too, so how can you get around to testing this for yourself? Well, for those of you without the required computing power at home, they have provided two hugging face spaces, one they call default and another with control net. You can also run them locally for ease, which is what I'm doing here. So let's take a look at the default one first. They've got some examples down the bottom here, so I'm going to go with the cloud one for speed also because I like clouds. All right, let's just submit that and see what it comes out like to start with. Awesome, we've got a dog made of clouds. Okay, I can see where the error is here. That needs to be a rodent. There we go, that's why it came out like a dog because it said dog in the prompt. So with that fixed, let's have a look at another. That's much better. Now I've got a rodent made out of clouds. Their control net version works just the same, only this time it's guided by the shape of another image via its depth map. Okay, let's do the same thing here. So we've got cloud, this time we've got the clouds and a robot to sort of guide what it looks like. Okay, how does this come out? Woo, yeah, sky robots. Now, interestingly, in this one, they default to not having a prompt when using that control net. If you don't fancy using that original repository, then there's also an extension available for Comfy UI. Being Comfy UI, you can also just integrate this into the workflow of your choice. It's worth noting, however, this is a work in progress at the time of making this video, so do expect things to change in the future. For me, at least, it works pretty well as it is right now, so let's take a look at it in action. Installation is just the same as any other Comfy UI extension via Git clone or Comfy UI manager. Once downloaded, restart, and you'll have your new visual style prompting node available. If you'd like the exact same workflows I'm using, they're already available to Patreons, or of course you could just make them yourself by looking at the video. Okay, so a quick overview here. Everything is all just the standard stuff, with the exception of our new node here, Apply Visual Style Prompting. Starting over in the top left, up here I'm just loading Stable Diffusion models, and then underneath that I've got the prompt and the sizes. Up here I'm just doing a little bit of basic image captioning. Uh, that's mostly because I found, well, each time you change the image, I did, often didn't want to have to type in a description of that image, so I just got Blip to do it, so that way I could flick through quickly and see how styles went. It works a lot better if you do type your own captions in, so there I've got a little toggle if you want to have the automatic captions or just type your own ones. For the most part, you can leave that empty as well, you don't necessarily even have to type a prompt in. Just underneath that is the style loader for the reference image. There it is, and also the apply visual style prompting node. So that's the main star of this event. And finally for now, over here on the right, that's just a default generation. So how the render would look if you don't have the apply visual style prompting going on. And I think you should be able to see quite the difference there. I'm prompting for a colorful paper cut art style cyberpunk space woman's face and it should be pretty obvious just how different the visual style prompted generations down here in the middle are because well they look like the style image i've put up here all colorful and paper cutty let's have a little zoom in there so i think that's quite nice i think that's done very well on the style you can of course provide any style image you like so if i change that one to a different style and then render it again then we have that new style applied. It's a lot darker with loads more blue. And yeah, I think that's really awesome again. Excellent. So now you can style your generations just by providing an image. But what about other nodes? Does it play well with those? Well, it sure does. Here's an IP 
a adapter example where I'm using the full face and this new input image along with the same style as before. Once again, it sort of merged the two. Looks like a great mix to me. She's got those ears and green hair, as well as that colorful paper cut style and white background. Control Net also appears to work okay like they show in this example. However, this is where I started to feel some strangeness sneaking in. So far, everything looked to be working fine with Stable Diffusion 1.5. However, when I scroll down a little bit and look at these cloud rodents, can you see something that is slightly different with these? Yes, they're really colorful, whereas the clouds are white. Just to zoom out a little bit there, I've change the prompt so it simply says a rodent like we did in the original application earlier but they're all colorful so something not quite working there but the original did use sdxl i'm using sd 1.5 so is it different if i use sdxl well let's take a look and find out this is the same workflow, only this time, of course, I'm using SDXL models. The default cyberpunk space woman is what I've prompted for once again, and she looks pretty cool over there in the default group. And over here in the style, that looks to have applied nicely as well. Further down, once again, IP adapter SDXL version is doing its thing. But what about our cloud rodent? How has he come out? Oh. Oh yes, okay, yes, that's much better. Certainly much more cloud-like, but not quite like in the original app. My guess as to why I got all these colors in Stable Diffusion 1.5 versus not in SDXL is, uh, I guess it's something to do with 1.5. Not really sure, as that's pretty much all that has changed, really. And if all of that looks cool, but you're not sure how to install Comfy UI in order to use these workflows, it's all explained in this next video.